Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joya, by the way. If you are new here, thank you for being here. Subscribe to the channel, all of that. If you are a returning visitor, thank you for still being here. So somebody DM'd me on TikTok the other day about the study materials that I use to pass my CIC or my certification in infection control, which is an exam that is uh, geared towards people in the infection prevention, infection control sector. Um, it is a great type of certification to have um, because it kind of solidifies your commitment to the field. Um, think of it kind of like a certification you would get for really anything, like any field that you're in, like that certification that will help you get to the next level, help you market yourself better, help improve your resume. That's kind of what it's good for. Um, so just real quick, I use several things, um, but keep in mind what I used and if you use it, doesn't mean you're gonna pass. Like you have to use wisdom and make sure that you study for yourself. So, um, but the first thing I would say I used is um, the APIC sixth edition study guide. Um, this was given to me by my job. They had it at the at my job already. So I didn't have to purchase it, but I think it, it costs a pretty penny. I do know that maybe over a hundred dollars, but I know there is a new type of study guide out now that just came out from APIC that is different. Um, so you might want to look into that, but yeah, I use a sixth edition study guide. I also used um, my the APIC text. This was also provided to me by my job. Um, they have the text provided to the people on the team. So I was able to use that. Um, I also used the study group. So my uh, the state of Florida has a study group with the Department of Health. So I will link that below. They actually are starting up again in November, I think November 1st or something like that for the next cohort. So it's like a 26 to 28 week um, study group that literally walks you through um, different chapters of the APIC text and different key concepts that you might see on your exam, that you probably will see on your exam. Um, I did the study group technically started last year and finished early this year. Um, and it's a really good study group. Like I really recommend it if you have the time I believe they do Fridays for like an hour. So if you can join, join. I also did the Washington State study group for a minute. I don't have the link to join that, but I do have the link for their um, Google Drive. And so in the Google Drive, it has like all the contact information for the teacher. Her name is Patty. So I guess if like you find her contact information, you can send her an email and ask how you can join the study group. Or in the Google Drive, it actually might have how you can join the study group. I don't know but I know that I have the link for the Google Drive. So I'll post that below. So that, so APIC study guide, APIC text, uh, CIC group with Florida, Washington State CIC group, and a oh, last thing was these videos on YouTube. So the person um, that started the Florida group, like when she really started it years ago, she actually posts the videos from that time frame and things like that on YouTube. It's a YouTube uh, channel called CIC Epidemiologist. I'll post it somewhere. I'll also probably try to link it below too. Um, so this was the actual original person of the study group for Florida years ago. Um, and she ended up leaving the Department of Health and doing other things. But the videos are still there. I think the last time they did a study group was in 2022, I think. And that's what's uploaded. And that's kind of what I watch. So I kind of watch like pretty much 12 or so videos just about different topics and in the videos they have questions so it's like really good like I recommend especially if there are areas that you aren't too good with for me it's micro because I don't have a micro background like I did a micro class but that was forever ago and I don't remember much because it was a summer class and I did it very very fast I got an A but I don't remember anything from micro um, so it was a great refresher like to watch the video okay gram negative bacteria gram positive okay gram positive has this it stains blah 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 um, so I kind of walk you through that those are some great videos I highly recommend and there are other resources in the Washington State study group um, Google Drive like great resources so I recommend like definitely look at their Google Drive and go through it um, if you can get onto a live session with the group I definitely recommend that I believe it's still going on right now. I think they started in July. Um, so I think they're they're still pushing through. So if you can join the cohort, hop in, 
get some information, but the Florida one doesn't start until November 1st. Anyways, um, the a little bit about the CIC exam, it's geared towards people that are already in the field that have some experience. But if you don't have any experience, but you still want some type of certification, you can apply for what's called the AIPC. I believe it's the Associate uh, Infection Prevention Certification. I think that's what it stands for. And it's geared towards entry level, like no experience type thing. Um, yeah, keep in mind these exams. And then they also have the LTC, CIP or something like that. It's for long-term care. So specifically for people that are infection prevention is in long-term care. So those are the nursing homes, assisted livings. That's what that's geared towards. So there's several exams that you can take. Um, I did the CIC because I think that was the best overall because I had experience in IP. So I didn't need to take the entry level exam. And then LTC, I don't necessarily want to stay in only LTC. So I didn't feel like I should get that exam. I think the CIC overall was like the best for me. Um, but keep in mind, these exams are uh, a lot. They cost a lot. I think mine was $410. Yeah. So if you're going to take it, take it serious because nobody has that type of money to be just laying around and throwing around. So um, any study tips I can share? I would say the APIC text is a lot. There's a lot of information. I just don't think it's feasible to read it all um, unless you just really love reading that type of stuff. What I would say is to do questions like I use the six edition study guide. So do questions like they have questions in there. They have practice exams. So do those and kind of get a baseline of like what where you're at. And then from there, kind of target your approach. So in the sixth edition study guide, the questions at the, in the practice test, they'll tell you um, they'll give you the rationale after you you know look at the answers. And it'll say like what chapter uh, from the APIC text does this reference? So like if you're asked, had a question about like immunizations or, you know, whatever, healthcare personnel returning to work. They're going to have the APIC chapter that you should go back and read like once, you know, you have time. It kind of references that. So you can kind of target that. So like what I found is like I would get a lot of questions wrong from a certain chapter of the APIC text. It'll say like chapter whatever. And I'll be like, dang, I'm writing down my notes like, oh, man, I got this question wrong, that one wrong. And these are all from chapter whatever. I need to probably go read this APIC text chapter because I'm getting these questions wrong. And that's what I would do. So if I said I got like three questions wrong from the same chapter of the APIC text, I would go and read the APIC text for that chapter. So I kind of just recommend doing it like that, um, unless you just really have time to read the whole APIC text, but you won't have time. So do some questions, do some practice tests, get a baseline, and then um, read the APIC text based on the things that you don't know. Um, and just keep keep studying, understand that it's all about concepts. So if you understand that um, you have gram, ne gram negative and gram positive bacteria, that's good, okay. But what's next, okay? Why does this stain purple? Why does this stain pink? Like knowing these key concepts is what's gonna uh, help you pass the test. So, you know, memorizing things, mm, not that good. Like, okay, if I have a patient that has this, 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 um, you know, like that kind of stuff. You kind of got to know. You just got to know. So that's it. That's all. If you guys have any additional questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or shoot me a DM uh, on TikTok or uh, Instagram. Uh, I'll put my information in the description. It'll also be at the end of this video, my um, socials. So anyways, that's it. Um, as always, stay grateful, stay faithful, stay consistent. Peace.